G'day everyone, today we're going to learn how to easily transfer your driving code to autonomous code. And this is going to be the same process for whether you use uh, VexIQ or VexV5. And these are for blocks projects, okay? So uh, the process is going to be the same, whether you use V5 or not. And um, uh, this is also the same process we teach uh, all of our own students. Okay, so we are going to start by looking at Swish, which is the uh, Rapid Relay Hero Bot from VexIQ. And uh, the program is really simple. All you have to do is, um, so this is the drive code for Swish. So I call this program Swish Drive. It's um, uh, saved into slot one of the robot brain. Uh, we set the catapult velocity to 100% and the intake velocity to 100%. In addition, we also have to look at our devices. So if you look carefully at the devices, you'll see how this robot is set up. IQ Brain is second generation. Our intake is at port eight. Our catapult is a motor group. So there's two motors at one and seven. Now, when you are setting up a motor group for this catapult, that'll make sure that one of the motors are reversed. That way, uh, it is all actually spinning the same direction. The drivetrain is at left motor 6, right motor 12, and it's using the brain inertial um, uh, gyro sensor. And then finally, we have a controller. So this controller uh, has a standard two-stick arcade. So the left stick is controlling the forward and backwards movement of the robot. The right stick controls the left and right turning of the robot. And then we have the intakes, uh, which is controlled by the left uh, shoulder buttons. And then the catapult is controlled by the right shoulder buttons. Very straightforward. And this code will make it so that your catapult runs uh, very well. Your Swish robot will run really, really well in driving mode. Okay, so this is a drive, drive code. But what about if we want to switch this into a um, autonomous um, driving skills code. Well, first thing we have to do is we need to save out this project with a different file name. Make sure that it's saving into a second slot so it's not overriding the first slot. And then we are going to um, replace all of our controller inputs with broadcasting events and listeners. After that, we're going to delete our controller. And then we're going to be able to, uh, with all that set up, create a autonomous routine. All right, so those are the steps and we will get started by saving our code. All right, so here we go, file. I'm gonna save this project as, instead of Swish Drive, I'm gonna call it Swish Auto. And then, I'm going to change the slot from 1 to 2 so that it doesn't override my old code. Now let's have a look at our controller. Now I want to firstly replace um, the intake, uh, the intake code. Hold on for a second. Here we go. You've got to replace the intake code so when we press L, L down we reverse the intake, okay? L down reverses the intake. So I go and create an event. When I receive message one, I change message one to a new message called L down press. L down press, and after you create a new message, it doesn't automatically change the message that's inside the drop menu. You have to still click on it on the drop menu. And then what are we doing? We are spinning the intake in reverse. And we remember this, spinning the intake in reverse. We remember this because when we looked at the controller, when I press L down, it spins the intake in reverse. See? And then I need to create the same thing for when I let go of the L down button. So here, I create a new message, L down, release. 
And then what are we doing when we release the L down button? We stop the intake. And then we have to do the same thing for L up. So duplicate that. Instead of L down press, oh, hold on, you see this? I created L down release, but because I didn't press on it in the drop down menu, I almost forgot. So I have to press L down release. Okay, so L down press spins the intake in reverse, L down release stops the intake. Now I need to take L to do L up press. So new message, L up press. And then we go here, L up press, spin intake forwards. And then what happens when L up is released? L up release, L up release, all set, we stop the intake. Okay. So when you press the button for your for your intake, then it starts spinning, but when you release it, it stops the intake. Now this is just emulating our actual button uh, events on our controller. And we do the same thing for our catapult. So here, when I receive message, R down this time. R down press. Make sure that we select it. Mm, where to get R down press? We spin the catapult in reverse. And then another new message R up press. Spins the catapult in forwards. And then when we release either one, uh, down release. Uh, down release, we stop the catapult. And then we do the same thing for our up release. So that was our down release. New message for our up release. Oops, not our press, our release. Stop the catapult, okay? So that is all the code that we need to emulate any of the uh, potential button inputs for when we are um, spinning the intake or the catapult. And then how do we um, uh, string this into our Auton code? So when the program starts, we set the catapult and intake velocity to 100%. Uh, and we've also uh, replaced all of our button presses with um, uh, broadcasting events and listeners. And then we don't even have to replace the code for our um, uh, our movement, our drivetrain movement, because all you have to do for drivetrain movement is to say use these ones, drive forward and backwards and turn left and right blocks. So now that all that is done, you can go into your devices and then you can remove your controller. And the controller, delete. Okay. So now that we've deleted our controller um, and we've got all of our events and listeners done, uh, the only le thing left is to actually write your autonomous routine. So to write your autonomous routine, you use when started. So there's a parallel block here. So there's a when started here, which sets our velocity and our intake speed. And then this one, I set a separate one so that we um, separate out the responsibilities of our code, all right? So there's one stack for when started that looks after getting your um, your starting parameters set, but then this get started, uh, when started block, is just to control my autonomous routine. So here I'm gonna create a little bit of a comment. Auton routine, okay? And then how does your autonomous routine look like? Well, first thing we do is we wait for one second. Now, waiting for one second has a couple of benefits. 
first thing is that it lets you move your finger away from the robot before it actually runs the program. Um, a second benefit is that it ensures that your parameters get set first before you run your routine so that there's no clash. Uh, if I wanted to move my robot forward uh, during autonomous, then I'll just go drive forward, okay? Uh, and then I can drive backwards, for example. I forward and backwards. Um, I can make it turn left and right. But then if I want to um, uh, press the uh, intake button to have it start pressing, uh, uh, moving the intake, then I'll just broadcast a message uh, L up press. Okay, and then I can move around a little bit more. I can drive forward while the intake is being pressed. And then um, I can release the intake by broadcasting another message saying L up release. See? And then I can do another move. Let's say turn to the left, for example. Uh, and then I can start loading my catapult. Um, I just broadcast a message to spin my catapult, uh, down press. And then if I want to hold it down for a little bit longer, I'll wait for like three seconds. And then let's say I want to fire the catapult. I broadcast um, uh, down release, and then I have to uh, Press the other one, R up press. Broadcast message, R up press, and so forth. Okay? So this is what your autonomous routine will look like. It'll be a bunch of moves and also a bunch of broadcasts to emulate the different button presses that you would normally have um, in your controller code. Okay? So there are more advanced methods that uh, I want to talk to you about, but I'm going to make it uh, uh, in a separate video for my members only. So if you want to uh, learn how to move forward and backwards uh, based on seconds instead of distance, for example, uh, and if you want to be able to um, uh, control your um, uh, joysticks as well, if you're using holonomic drive or if you're using X drive, uh, or if you're controlling your catapults using your uh, left and right sticks, then I'll go through that in the advanced video for members. Uh, and also I will post the code uh, for today's project onto my GitHub and the link will be in the description. Hope you enjoyed the lesson today. I will see you all again next time. Bye-bye.